how good these masters are now. There are so many more really good masters. I do it again. in here real quick to preview what you're about to see. This is the Masters quarterfinals and I made a video about this last year and it's one of my favorite things I get to do all year because the Masters, they're awesome. I did a video on team quarterfinals just a short time ago and teams are really cool too, but most of us, we're not going to be team athletes. But all of us are either going to be Masters athletes, God willing, or are already masters athletes. This is our current or our future. And that's what's so incredible about all of them. Like some of these athletes, we have a woman who qualified for semifinals, Yvonne Howard, and she's 61 years old and she's doing rope climbs and she could do muscle ups and all these things that a lot of 60 year olds don't think they can do now and don't think they could have ever done. And People are showing us that you can do this. And all of these people at this point started this later in life because CrossFit hasn't been around that long. So even from, you know, the baby masters, the 35 year olds to the uh, 65 plus, all of it is just really cool to watch and really awesome athletes to spotlight because we're all going to be there one day and because they're all really impressive and amazing. So I hope you enjoy this one because I really enjoyed putting it together and shooting all of their experiences. There's some really cool interviews in there. So hopefully you watch till the end and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Enjoy the rest of this. We had about 30 athletes that qualified and of those 30 athletes, probably about 24, including the team, uh, did the, the competitions. It was chaotic, especially for the teams and masters going back to back. Um, our members were really good about accommodating and our, fortunately our coaches were even more more accommodating with how they adjusted classes to give them the room to do the workouts. It takes a lot of room to do those workouts. What is it like seeing so many members of your community be this successful with the top 10% crossfitter. Yeah, that's exciting. That's and it's what's cool about it is it has inspired uh, and a lot of other members have told me this has inspired them to to up their game for next year so that they can be part of that kind of crew. So it's been motivating for our members to watch and see them do it. And those ones that are participating, they're learning new things about themselves. The level of competition you know doing back-to-back -back workouts is is much different and they come in they're sore and they're, you know I heard a couple members say well you know they took Advil for the first time they haven't taken it in a long time and they had to get psyched up and do another full all-out workout with people watching and cheering that's it's stressful but it's life-changing for them which is cool and I feel like there were more athletes this year than last year. I don't know if that's true. Yeah, there are. There's more. We, we Last year we had probably about 15 total athletes, so we almost doubled the number of athletes that qualified this year, partly because they saw the athletes last year participating in, in the quarterfinals. on this one, pace it out a little bit, save your grip, know that your core is going to be tanked at the end. And this isn't your first quarterfinals, how many times have you done this? I've done this four times. Wow. Yeah. What, is, what is it like? Um, it is 
is a little lonely because it's not like the Open, but uh, it's fun. Next level of competition, the workout's really hard. And here in Diablo, we have a fantastic community, so it's fun. Do you have any goals? I'm gonna go right just to stay healthy. I'm 55, so if I can keep coming back every year, it's fun to compete, stay healthy. Are you one of the younger ones in your division this year? Yes. So 55 to 59, I'm I'm the youngster of my division. Any so. aspirational semis? No. I mean, it'd be great, but where I finished in the uh, open was in the 300. So there's some pretty fit people out there. Oh, guys. Thank you. It was an adventure, always. Yeah, I wasn't sure, but you just kind of have to get into it and do your best. And it went well. I finished it. That was my goal. Honestly, it's supposed to get harder as you go, but I found the first round the hardest because the grip, like holding it, just the, the farmer carry thing was like really taxing on the forearms. Fine, because if you have to go to singles, you just got to go fast. That's all. Yes. The weight was what we're used to. We always do 35 pounds in class in every workout, so it's fine. Yes. Um, I think this is going to be a good year for me, so we'll see. There's a chance. You have to be top 30, though, so not a great chance, but there's a chance. So it was a workout number two. How'd it go? The workout went great. Um, great, great environment. I was uh, encouraged, and um, the people around me just kept pushing me, and I just uh, gave it my all. How were those uh, handstand push-ups, wall-facing handstand push-ups? Actually, those handstand, uh, the wall-facing handstand push-ups were pretty good. I felt good doing this. It's actually somewhat of a strength for me. Um, it was really about making sure my hands were placed properly and being able to stay steady with the continuous repetitions and just rolling out through that. Let's say an interesting way of getting out of it. Yeah. <laughs> Once he told me that we didn't have to walk back down, I was like, oh shoot, <laughs> I'm out of this. Gonna roll straight into the next GHDs. How were the cleans? Cleans, you know, initially when I did the warm up, I was saying, okay, I'm gonna be ready to do a full squat clean. But after those box jumps, I just want to, you know, just get that weight up and get my elbows underneath that weight as quickly as possible. And uh, I was actually quite surprised. Uh, my, in my mind, I said, like, can I hit 300? But then I said, okay, let me just go ahead and be, get that full rep and not have any failed reps. So I'm happy on that end. Okay, and those cleans. How much did you hit? I hit. 285, I believe it was. Still yeah. pretty heavy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's your goal with uh, quarterfinals? Your placement goal? So my placement goal is to make it to that top percentage. I don't know exactly what that percentage is to go ahead and make it to the semifinals. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's my awesome. goal. And it would be the first time um, ever hitting that goal. We'll just see what happens. I'm just uh, following routine. I just had a follow Jackson's routine and uh, I have a great group that I'm working out with. So. Hope to go ahead and accomplish it this year. Awesome, good luck. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah. Here is some video from workout three. I unfortunately did not get any of the masters doing this workout because I had work obligations and couldn't get them doing it. But here are some non-masters, including me, doing that workout. I actually have a whole video of this workout. Rich Froning called this workout the most boring workout he's ever done or most boring CrossFit workout he's ever done. So if you're curious to see that, I will link that on the screen and in the description below and you can check that out. But now, back to the actual masters. You ready? Box on, video's gone. We're gonna go. In three, two, one, go.
So you just finished the final workout. Yes, thank God. How was it? Well, this one is kind of in my wheelhouse because there's no gymnastics, so I always got to take advantage of the workout where I can. Um, I did this in 2015, but I was in a different age group. So I had 65 on the bar then, 45 on the bar now, and I got 11.07 in 2015, and I got 10.05. So I'll take that. I'm older. Um, <laughs> Nine years older and I'm 58, so I'll take it. I feel really good about that. It was a great way to end. Your thrusters look great. How are you feeling on them? I mean, I just kind of blocked everything out. Craig gave me a tip um, to just think of it as a wall ball. And I was like, okay, I love wall balls. I love wall balls. And one of my cues for myself is wall balls are like marshmallows. Um, they're light. They're going up in the air. So that's what I did. And then I tried to always finish, like on my round of 21, I wanted to do 11, then 10, so I descending, but I stopped at 10, but then just committed to myself to do the final 11. So I don't even know if I ended up doing that, but that was the goal. How do you feel about the weekend as a whole? Um, I feel like the workouts were really good. Um, a, a nice mix of things and some new things like the really long 30 minute one. Um, I feel like all of the movements were fair to test. I do feel like there is a lot of confusion with the setup and for the people who don't have big gyms, I just feel like I wish CrossFit would look at that like we used to do. It was just having the equipment as close together as possible to make it as efficient and not get caught up in measuring so much, but just look at the movements and the quality and the standards of the movements. So that would be the one piece of feedback I would have for Boz and his team. Yeah. Well, Thank you. Start it on YouTube and then you open up a computer and you get the, that gives you the link immediately. But the music has to be off, right? It's really cool to see these athletes make the quarterfinals, but I imagine there's a lot of other things happening within the gym. A lot of other athletes who maybe don't make it to quarterfinals but are still doing awesome things here. Yeah, it does. It, it, it motivates athletes to go to the next level. Interestingly, yesterday, um, while we're doing the whole age groups, I noticed pop up in my feed about eight or nine athletes did the Deca Spartan race in Sacramento and they train for it and, and they, they train in their own groups together and everybody you know knows that they're training separately for that event they encourage them we give them the space to do that and then they showed up together as a community to train at that event so it's getting people to do more than just CrossFit to take it their fitness and their health to the next level. Do you think we're going to see Diablo CrossFit beyond quarterfinals? And um, um, yes, we will have a. T it looks like we'll have a team in semifinals, and we may have one or two masters that'll make it to semifinals. So that's exciting for us. It's been a while. And you did quarterfinals this year. How'd that go? <laughs> yeah, it was great. I, I enjoyed it a great deal, and and for me, qualifying for it at this age is is awesome. There's, what's really remarkable to me because I competed a lot when I was 50. How good these masters are now. There are so many more really good masters. Back in the day, I could train hard, do class, and then work on my work on my weaknesses. Now you've got to work on your weaknesses. You've got to have a nutrition plan. You've got to most likely those those top five athletes have coaches and programming that's specialized for this. They're unbelievable. The results the results they're putting up. But it is exciting to be a part of it now. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> Popping back in here at the end just to let you know what we have coming up. Of course, I'm going to have more of my vlogs, a lot of those. Those are always part of this channel. But also, I plan to go down to the North America West semifinals in Pasadena. So, hopefully some content from there. We may have a team there. It's looking very likely from Diablo CrossFit. I hope to possibly do some stuff on the Masters semifinals since we may have an athlete there, Yvonne. So hopefully there'll be some content there, then the games and lots of stuff. So make sure you subscribe. I appreciate you all for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye. Oh, say bye, buddy. Bye. Bye. <laughs>